all right welcome to my news on point if today is your first time coming to this channel thank you so much for stopping by remember to subscribe and uh, turn on the notification bell so that you can receive a notification whenever we upload a new video for our wonderful returning subscribers who say big thank you for being part of the community my news on point your pulse on trending news please subscribe to our channel i'm going to be talking about something called the genesis of distortion I, I, I titled it, I said the genesis of distortion. The reason why Nigeria it is today is because there's a genesis to the distortion. It didn't start today. And I'll take you back to some key dates. I'll take you back to the year 1914. The year 1914 was the year they amalgamated the Northern and the Southern Protectorate. But before then, the British had first amalgamated the Southern Protectorate. Because you see, when they came, they met us fighting ourselves. Prior to that time, we have fought the Kiriji and the Jalomi Wars. So in the South, for instance, when the British came, the only thing they had to do was just to unite the warring factions. Because the Jeshakiti Parakov were fighting deep, the Oyo people and all of that. So we were fighting and we had made a lot of slaves. Most of the people that went from the Kiriji and Jalobi Wars were those that went as slaves to Latin America. Those are the people that came back as what we call the Agudaos. These are the likes of the Darochas. So that's why you see that Lagos Island is filled with a lot of Brazilian architecture. They even celebrate a Fanti festival. In fact, we eat Frijon in Christmas. Frijon is not native to us. It's Portuguese food. So those were the cultures they brought back. But how did we get those cultures? Because we were fighting. So they said the kingdom of God suffered violence. I know it's violence can take us by force. We were already fighting from Heather too. Then the British came, settled the fights, then they colonized. The first inroad of the British in what is called Lagos Colony today came in the middle 1800s when two people too were fighting over the throne of lagos kosoko and akito so they called in the british to come and settle fights but you see when you call a bigger man to come and settle fights of something that is very juicy what do they do they take it from you so when Akito went aboard a ship called the HMS Prometheus on the Lagos Marina here, and he said, Mio Fico Torre, the British said, we don't know what you're talking about. Sign this edict that you will cede Lagos to us. So Lagos became a crown colony, and that's why in 1906, the first thing we did was the Southern Protectorate, the other fighting parts of the Yoruba parts, and Lagos colony. And that's why you see up till 1960, in fact, when we gained independence in 1960, residents full born in Lagos had the chance to either choose a British passport or a Nigerian passport. But a lot of them opted for British uh, for Nigerian passport. So after that amalgamation, they started to rule over us. So guess the things they started to do to us. The first thing they did was they distorted our mindset. That's the genesis of the distortion. So they told you that your black color was never good enough. How did they do it? Indoctrinations. At first, they tell you you have to go through an education system. And after the education system, they say your language was not good enough, so they taught you in English. Have you ever wondered that if we are taught mathematics in Igbo, there will have been more people with a sound understanding of mathematics than in English. So the first thing you had to do, you had to learn your colonizer's language. And when you, when you learn your colonizer's language, they took away your identity on how to think. So they call your customs and traditions idolatry. And the last thing they did was that they set up a fight between you because they know if you are united, then there's going to be a problem. You remember the Tower of Babel? Even our God knew the importance of unity. So what did he do? He changed the language. So they set up a fight. And it's so easy. How would they do it? They have agents stir up ethnic strife. Yorubas will fight Hausa, Hausas will fight Igbos and all of that. And they fan the embers and they constantly do it. So the first genesis of the social 
was initial colonialism and they continued in fact they did it up till 1959 when we had the first elections the 12th of december you know what they deliberately did that election we know who won the election who had more votes the ncnc had more votes but originally the british had planned that it was going to be a hung parliament you know what they call a hung parliament a hung parliament is when there's no clear winner in a parliamentary system so you have to form a government of national unity the british had known that it will be either the Yorubas and the Igbos, the Action Group or the NCSC and the MPC. The MPC was standard. So that was how they did it. And that was what happened. But they knew that was going to bring a very big problem. You had a boisterous Action Group in opposition. It was going to be problems. And they knew it was not going to last. And they knew that it was going to open more fault lines. That led to the war in 66 so have you ever wondered that it was just after six years after the first elections no then we have another we had another elections in 64 65 that spanned into 64 65 so pretty much six years after the first election and two or three years after the second election then we had a civil war the further deepened the fault line so the first agent of distortion and i'm sure we all know that it will take years for you to recover from such a strife like that. So they had set the tone for what became the war and they had given it to us at a beat and we are taking it. So once we are taking it, once we have fought the first civil war and all of that, and when the civil war started, they were the ones who started selling their weapons. So afterwards, they had started the first genesis of distortion. They had caused hatred amongst us. The hatred means that we will never be able to come together. And please, that's why I say every wall of hatred you have for your brother, break it. Because if they can take our unity, they can take our strength. So once they caused that hatred, we couldn't come together again. And that's what we've been circling with. In the last election, our problem was not about tribe or religion. But they made it about tribe or religion in the end. Because they know the genesis of distortion. So that's the first genesis of distortion. And that's why you see that life in Nigeria has now become something like an obeisance state. It is British. We talk about Leah Shareb. Leah Shareb was a symptom of a deeper problem. We talk about Nigeria not work. It was not structured in a way that it was going to work. Because people wanted to take it for their own benefits. And that's why they don't like the truth. That's why they want to dominate every sphere. They want to shut people down in the media. When you try to rat them out. So they deliberately put all of these things in place. So that these systems and these hegemonies will not make you come together and work. You think all of a sudden Boko Haram just starting, it's also part of a grand system. Now that, that we've properly destroyed parts of this country with kidnapping, insecurity and all of that, it's easy for non-state actors to roam wild. So there was a genesis to the national distortion and they knew what they were doing pre-independence post-independence this game is so big that our politicians are just being played as a pawn in the game but you know why it's easy to play our politicians because they see their greed a nation can never grow if the leaders are greedy A nation can never grow if the leaders are greedy. Once they see greed, they exploit the greed of the leaders. Have you ever noticed why is it that most African countries are poor? Because their leaders are greedy. 
and they are taking advantage of the mindset of their leaders to destroy the nations for what reason for natural resource because they know we are blessed you know nigeria has the capacity to be a 10 15 trillion dollar economy even more than that america is about going to about on 20 trillion now we have the capacity to be a superpower but you know we have so much resource so the next thing they do is they target the greed of our leaders and the selfish interest of our leaders and they pull the buckle so our leaders are so content with them having five ten billion in their bank accounts rather than the collective development of the people i mean look at our look at how bad the roads are in lagos for in lagos are collecting a lot of taxes so it's not even about the politicians it's about the systems that break all of us down that create this national distortion even with our security system that's why you see it will now have different layers they will put ethnicity in it they will put religion in it but these things are deeper than ethnicity and religion because they need you to be confused about the dimensioning of these systems they don't want you to think and know where it's coming from so the truth is you can't grow beyond the system that is fraudulent. That's why you see the way we are today with the Naira. All of a sudden, the Naira that used to be one to one with the dollar. Look at where it is today, it's 1,004 something. When they were defending the Naira and we kept on telling them there are no fundamentals, they thought I was joking. They said, oh, that boy is a stupid boy. As the Naira now started rising again, for a country that is so much blessed with milk and honey and its currency cannot be stable, you will know to a large extent that it's because the leaders are not thinking right and they've been sucked in. So maybe sometime soon we'll defend the Naira even more and it will go back to square one again. But please do not think that I will go back to where it used to be before. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm in the church. I believe in hope and faith. But I'm a realist to the call. I don't, I'm not sabi deceive people though. If you think it will be one to one, be careful with what you think of. Except we change the systems and the mindset that makes it difficult for us not to be able to produce as a country. except to become a productive nation except we now start to tackle the genesis of this national distortion we're not going to go anywhere so insecurity you are still in is a symptom have you ever wondered why growing up the same army that used to be so powerful cannot get rid of bandits so you think all of a sudden it just happened it didn't just happen you think the system just got destroyed like that it didn't just start it was systematically and they kept on sipping into our consciousness and our mindsets and that's why you see it's getting more difficult by the day but you see in all of this for those that have facts and know the lord their feet shall be firm on the ground but the thing is, it's not about just having facts and knowing the Lord. So what are you doing about it in your space? Are you part of the national greed? Because the world has enough to meet human need, not human greed. So we have a leadership that wants to meet their greed and meet our need. It can never be possible. That's why you see how much trillion, 26, 27 trillion budgets, it's not going to go far. You know why? There's so much greed. A lot of people want to eat. Egunje. So those are the real agents of distortion. Except we understand that these systems are systems that were built inherently not to make Nigeria work. We will be fooling ourselves.
than people like Leah Sharibu and other people that have been caught in the crossfire of Nigeria are just victims in all of this. They're just symptoms. The issues are deeper. In the last 10 years, have you seen real progress? It keeps decelerating. Have you ever wondered why? Because there are no fundamentals. All we have is little successes that people amplify, but it doesn't make it true. What 50 naira could buy 10 years ago, can it buy today again? We say we have gas, we are flaring gas, but we can't buy gas in our own country without having an exorbitant fee. We produce electricity, but it's not enough. Despite the fact that they don't give you power, they now come and say band A. And you're not even getting the band. The electricity agency has like bandits. Today, this morning, I had lots of power in the house. I recharged how much was it? 35, 40,000 naira. And I got, I think, how much, how many units did I get? Maybe a little over 100 units. But have you ever wondered why is it that at some point power was a lot better then than it is today? Some people will say, oh, it's because the Nigerian population grew. No. It's because the system kept on getting corrupt and more greedy and more greedy and more greedy and more greedy to the point of distortion. And if care is not taken, it's going to be worse. I don't like to deceive people. Though. Yes. If the church does not rise up and speak true to power, if the actors do not rise up and speak true to power, it's going to be worse. If they ever told you that we can have a country where they can kidnap somebody for close to 10 years, would you ever have believed it in Nigeria before? No. If they ever told you that you have a country where food can be this expensive, would you ever believe it? If they ever told you that Nigeria now will be so at a point that Benin Republic, their currency is bigger than ours. If you saw the front page of the Telegraph newspaper yesterday, they said Nigerian neighboring countries now reject Naira up for CFA and dollar because CFA is 650 to the dollar. Naira is 1,000 for something to the dollar. And if care is not taken, it's going to be worse because at some point we are going to 1,900. This was the same. <laughs> this was the same CFA that, as at the early nineties, sixteen thousand naira was one million CFA. So the ingredients of national distortion, and in all of this, the political class still wants to grapple. So the ingredients of national distortion is greed. But the funny thing is, what I'm most scared about is the greed of the people. Because you see, all of this on scrupulous of politicians, they have agents. Some of them will have agents in this place. Isn't it? But because, and I'm going to talk to you today, because of what you want to benefit, you see the truth and you look away. You don't know you're doing yourself. Because if this country is good, it's going to be good for all of us. If this country is not good, it's not going to be good for all of us. Are you happy the way it is that as a city as big as Lagos, we don't have pipe bone running water? When last can you open your tap and say this is government running water? And for you to still do borehole, they are going to charge you for doing borehole. But guess what? I had a friend that was telling me, I said, 1992, when he moved into his house on Molly Estates, there was pipe bone running water that came into his house and they said, connect to government water. So how did the situation become deplorable over the years? 
So these are the agents of national distortion. And that's why I say insecurity is just part of them. The same north that people used to love to drive to in the past. Very lovely roads that your car will even break down. You will sleep on the road. A places that you can't go again because of greed and national strife. But let me tell you, they will look for all sorts of things to cloud it. They will call it, oh, it's because of tribalism and everything. That's why you, the people, need to be united. Yoruba, for an Igbo man, the Yoruba brother is not your problem. For a Yoruba man, an Igbo man is not your problem. For an Hausa man, an Ibibo man is not your problem. The thieving political class are your problems. Because of their own greed, and they don't want you to thrive and move further. And because it's always been a fight between the masses and the bourgeoisies. That was what the British too did during the colonial days. They will always build systems of exploitation from you. They will levy you, they will tax you. Number one system of is taxes. Now they want to collect what tax from you? Cyber security taxes. Has your earning increased? So, and that's the mindset of a few continue to get richer, why a lot of people continue to get poorer. Real quickly, how do we break these agents of national distortion? Number one, unity. We must unite across every cultural bound. Because our real problems are the perpetrators of evil, not your brother from another tribe. And that's why today I come here on behalf of Nigeria. Anybody that's been caught in any tribal debacle or war, please apologize. Let's forgive. For this last election, please let's forgive. We can't continue to hold the hurt so much. It will stop us from progress. These are bad people who want the division to continue so that we will not be able to reason properly for ourselves. So it's a gimmick to set us against each other. You are not my brother. You are not my problem, my brother. You are not my problem, my sister. It is those who are manipulating us that are trying to cause chaos amongst us. So please, whoever is hot, I beg. On behalf of the integrity and the hope we expect in this country, let's forgive. Another thing we need to hold our politicians accountable, and that's why I say kudos to you, sir. Please, a big round of applause for Reverend. A big round of applause for Reverend. As a church is set up an advocacy group, most churches will not try it. Because they'll be waiting for the day one politician will come and donate drum. Or they'll be waiting for the day Pulcha will come and they will endorse them on stage. Thanks for watching. Kindly subscribe to our channel.